The most affordable vehicle Tesla sells currently is the standard range Model 3. It's their smallest, slowest vehicle with the lowest range that they ship in North America. It's also their first vehicle that's sold in a price range under $40,000. Today, the price of this car has increased, which is unfortunate to see, but it remains an incredible vehicle. For some, this car feels too simple, and the interior features and overall quality don't justify the price. For many others though, myself included, once you drive this car, experience autopilot, and charge at home for a year instead of filling up with gas, you can really understand why thousands are paying up each day to buy these vehicles. Today I'm going to do a full review of the Tesla Model 3 after one year of ownership. Overall, each configuration of the Model 3 includes the same general features, the one exception being increased range, all-wheel drive, and quicker speeds on the long-range models. I'll be reviewing the standard range Model 3, which is the cheapest Model 3 they sell, but everything I'll mention applies to the Model 3 in general. We're going to talk about range, charging, autopilot, build quality, the driver experience, and frustrations with this car, so let's get into it. To start out with, let's talk about some things that are great about the Model 3. For one, I think it looks pretty great. Most angles have a really great look to them. There are only certain angles where the sloped roof, clearly designed for aerodynamics, can look a little bubbly, and the front from the side can look a bit like a duck, but most angles are really great to look at. While this car is small, I'm a big fan of its storage space. Because it's fully electric and has less parts overall, it has storage in a few places that vehicles this size typically don't. Not only do you have a normal spacious trunk, with seats that fold flat to allow for larger objects, but you have a very large under storage compartment underneath the normal trunk space that holds a lot of cargo. You have a side cubby in the back there, and then there's the front trunk. It's not gigantic, but can easily fit a backpack or anything you'd like to put in there that's around that size. I'm a drummer, and I regularly use this car for drums now. The one drum that might get tough is an especially deep 22 inch or larger bass drum, because it may not fit through the rear door. The next few things that are great about this car are things that come with it being fully electric. I'm able to charge this car at home and that is incredibly convenient. I haven't had to stop off at a gas station at all to drive this in the past year. I get home, plug in, and my car is charged up for the next day. Day to day it's a huge improvement over filling up with gas and saves me money there. You can see my full video breaking down the true cost of this car where I break down the gas, maintenance, and everything else linked up here or in the description below. Not filling up with gas saves time and then on road trips it can add a little bit of time depending on how far you're going. Tesla superchargers have you covered and I've driven this car to Northern California and back, to Las Vegas and back, and more all using superchargers. They are very fast and conveniently placed. In the past year, there has probably been two times where I was sitting in the car to charge for longer than if I had instead filled up with gas. On road trips, I just time it to plug in at a supercharger when I need to use the restroom and get some food. Even with road trip supercharging included though, looking at the past year with this car, I've saved a lot of time over going out of my way to a gas station and filling up each week or more. Charging is often people's biggest concern, and it seems to be a known fact that it takes forever, but it's just not true in practice. The act of charging can physically physically take longer, but it's just not time that you are experiencing if you can charge overnight. And again, superchargers are still very quick. Speaking of quick, this car is incredibly quick and zippy. Tesla now quotes a 0-60 to 60 in 5.8 seconds for this base Model 3. That's faster than most cars, but might not sound that impressive. But with instant torque, it really is. You can zip around incredibly easily, and it's just so fun to have so much instant power available in this car. It's also very useful in situations where speed is necessary. When you're driving, you're using one pedal driving. This is the result of regenerative braking that comes with two benefits. For one, the braking is putting energy back into the battery, helping the car to be more efficient, and for two, it's saving your brake pads. You aren't wearing on your brake pads the majority of the time in this car, so they actually last much longer than the average car's brake pads. Definitely not something I'm worried about getting changed on this car for some time, since I'm actually using the true brakes probably less than 2% of the time. Instead, I brake with one pedal driving that comes with this regen braking. You ease off the accelerator and the car starts braking. Then you ease back onto it to accelerate. You can even come to a complete smooth stop just using the accelerator. It takes a bit to get used to, but once you do, you can't go back, at least for me. No more needing your foot to constantly jump back and forth between the gas and the brake. 
Other benefits of this car being electric come with these zero tailpipe emissions, so you aren't directly polluting, and you can run the car, precondition the air, and do anything parked anywhere. You never need to worry about using the car in a garage or anything like that. Since there's no engine running there as well, the car is nearly silent. If you turn the climate controls off, it's absolutely silent at a stop. Then all you hear is a little bit of motor and tire sound when you accelerate. For me, it's incredibly nice to have a quiet car compared to a loud engine. Since this is a Tesla, it includes autopilot by default. Tesla sells an FSD package for $12,000, and I don't recommend buying that, especially because autopilot includes a lot. It does adaptive cruise control and lane keeping. It functions best on well-marked freeways, and on long drives, it's hard to fully describe how nice it is. It's a huge reason why I can't see myself getting a different car in the future. I'm so used to being able to have a little less stress on my long freeway drives because the car is handling everything, and I'm just there monitoring and ready to take over. For a six hour road trip, I will really end up driving about 30 minutes of that manually, if not less, because autopilot is that good and useful. It's not perfect though. You have to monitor it, of course, and sometimes it will break for no reason. This is a very, very rare occurrence, but the fact that it exists at all isn't fun in any way. You have to quickly take over when that happens. You could press the accelerator and stay in autopilot, but I usually take over entirely and then enter autopilot again once I feel comfortable. Again, it's extremely rare at this point, but I have experienced it a couple times in this car. In general, I tend to enjoy autopilot most on fairly straight roads. I'll take over for really steep curves at fast speeds, or if traffic comes to a very quick slowdown, since autopilot brakes harder than I prefer when this happens. As an owner, you'll find the right balance of how much you want to use autopilot. Some people are fine and confident using it in almost any situation, whereas I prefer to take over a bit more. Then some will want to use it only on the longest stretches of a drive. It's so easy to initiate an exit that it's really perfect for whatever your needs or preferences are. It makes road tripping in a Tesla incredibly nice. Everything about driving or having the Model 3 drive for you is great. Then comes the technology on screen. Most of what you do is controlled on the 15 inch center touchscreen. Having a screen this large makes a number of features really great. Maps navigation is very large on screen and incredibly useful and responsive. When you're browsing through music, you can do so on the built in screen, and it's really nice to have your full Spotify or Tidal library integrated on screen instead of using your phone. If you do use your phone though, the Bluetooth connection is remembered and connected so easily that after the initial setup, all you have to do is click the Bluetooth source on screen and you're connected. When backing up, the backup camera is the best I've seen in a vehicle because it includes the rear camera and two side cameras. The line guides are super reliable too, making backing up very easy. I actually think the camera is a big contributor to why so many Teslas back into spaces. It's actually much easier to accurately pull into a parking space and get it right the first time in reverse with these cameras. You also get used to backing up into spaces if you supercharge often. The technology included on screen that's the best in my opinion though is user profiles. You can create a user profile, link it to your key, and then all of your settings are remembered. When someone else uses the car with their own key, their settings are automatically in place and it's easy to manually switch profiles if needed. This remembers seat adjustments, wheel adjustments, mirror adjustments, autopilot and driving settings, as well as climate control preferences. Software updates are also a regular part of owning this car and they bring great new features. Since purchasing this car, there has been a complete UI overhaul which which I have grown to like, and then they added things like the blind spot cameras which pop up on turn signal. They also added a customizable dock. These updates are completely free, installed over Wi-Fi, and keep your car up to date so that this year old Model 3 feels exactly like a brand new one, and will for quite some time. Another thing you'll really learn to love about the Model 3 is the Tesla app. In the app, you can control what you'd expect in a car, but you can also vent the windows, precondition climate controls, check your car's location, schedule charging, and check in on your car's sentry mode security cameras at any time streamed to the app. If you are worried about something happening to your car, you can check in just like a Ring app or similar. It's very, very nice. Those climate controls I mentioned are very nice too, especially living through California summers. If I'm running into the store real quick, I can keep the climate while I'm in the store by tapping on screen or initiate climate controls in the app a little before I get back to my car. This app also functions as your key and automatically unlocks the Model 3 on approach. It locks when you walk away and it means that you never need to carry a key with you. The app has improved a ton since I got the car and I never really have any connection issues here. I personally exclusively use my phone as the key and keep a key card in my wallet as a backup if my phone were to die. While this car is small, it has a glass roof and that's also very nice to have. It gives this small car a very spacious and open feel that makes you and passengers feel very comfortable. 
For range, I have the standard range Model 3. It's the cheapest one they sell, and Tesla currently quotes a range of 272 miles with the wheels that I have. This has been plenty of range for what we're using the car for. After using the car for a year, I honestly think that if you have an easy charging solution, a standard range vehicle can work for way more people than people think. Road trips to Vegas and Northern California were the first times we felt the lower range battery, and superchargers still had us covered there, no problem. For daily driving, it's absolutely plenty. As far as degradation is concerned, the Tesla quote for the range is 272 miles. For some people, they worry about this way too much on their Tesla, thinking that if it doesn't show this EPA number at all times, their car has a problem. In the real world, getting 272 miles of range will never actually happen, except in the perfect circumstances. Real world range is less, and Tesla's in-vehicle range predictions take this into account. For example, in my app, it shows a range of 128 miles at 51%. That would mean a full range of 250 miles on the car at 100% charge. Some think that this means the battery has degraded a full 9% in one year, and that's just not how it works. 250 is a realistic prediction, and it's pretty great. Still, the only time I pay attention to this prediction is when I make a review video like this, though. I've found that the best practice is just to keep the car on percentage and not worry about the range. I've done a lot of road trips in this car, made all my daily drives no problem, and I don't stress about it. The Model 3 is fantastic for everything I just mentioned, and it makes the car better than most its size, but it's not without flaws. For the things I already mentioned, some things don't operate perfectly all the time. Most are small things, and I've never had any issues with driving, but apps like Spotify and Tidal aren't what they should be. I love having them on screen, but they can be a bit buggy. It might be related to the LTE connection changing as you drive, but Spotify has plenty of regular issues. I switched to Tidal because of this, and that has improved my experience listening to music, but mostly because I can offline download albums on Tidal, so if the connection doesn't work, I at least have albums downloaded that I can play. Tidal still miraculously doesn't have gapless playback as well, which makes listening to an album that flows one song to the next pretty frustrating. It's literally the only place you can use Tidal and have a gap happen between songs. The search for music is well below standard as well, as it mixes up sources and is confusing to navigate. I still get it wrong, and if I have a new passenger in the car, I don't even attempt to explain to them how to search for music in the car. It's too complicated, quirky, and buggy. For preconditioning the car, this is fantastic, but what I've noticed is that as soon as you get into the car, it reverts to your profile settings. It makes sense, but if it's blisteringly hot outside and you want the AC blasting as much as possible, you can set that on the app. Then when you get in though, it reverts back to the last temperature you set when your profile was used in the car. Same with heated seats when it's cold. They warm up as directed from the app, but then when you get in, you have to turn them back on again. For software, Tesla issues software updates throughout the year. These add great features, as I mentioned, but there can be a downside here. It's good that your car stays up to date, but if you don't like the new UI, you can't go back. You are stuck with the latest that Tesla ships, whether you like it or not. I personally like change this way, but many just want to know that their car that they like will stay the same in the future. Tesla won't be removing features, but they might put things like heated seats deeper into the menus to clean up the interface. They did this in the December update, and have since added it back with customizable options. One feature on screen that eliminates buttons around the screen and wheel is windshield wipers. You can press the button on the left stock to initiate wipers, but to adjust settings, you have to do so on screen. The real way Tesla wants you to use this is by turning on auto wipers. This is supposed to mean that it works like auto lights and you never actually need to adjust it, hence why leaving the controls on screen isn't a big deal. However, Tesla's auto wipers are pretty much garbage. The windshield can get pretty covered with light rain before they turn on. Then on perfectly normal sunny days, the wipers will just go off for no reason. This has happened more than a dozen times in this car. Just a fun, random windshield wipe for no reason. In practice, this means that you have to interact with the screen wipers here, and that's one of the on-screen features that isn't ideal. The door handles on the Model 3 contribute to its sleek look, and I like them. In practice, you get used to them, and it hasn't been a big deal at all. However, it can be a little frustrating to have to explain them to everyone you drive who doesn't own or understand Teslas. I find myself explaining both how to open the door to get in, and then how to open the door to get out of the Model 3, since it's a button. The wheels on the Model 3 and all Teslas have the feature of being very easy to curb rash. The wheels sit flush with the tire, and that's for optimal efficiency and range, but in practice, this means that if you ever pull too close to a curb, your wheel is scratched. We haven't curbed our wheels on this car, but it's only because we're keenly aware of this and constantly pulling up to curbs incredibly carefully while using the cameras. I wish this wasn't the case, but it's also something that's becoming more common on cars in general.
One of the weirdest things about the Model 3 that's a flaw is something in the AC system. After a pretty short time of ownership, the Model 3 climate system just smells. Many people know about this. Periodically, when you get into the car and the climate controls turn on, the vents just smell awful, like a mildew smell. There are people who have figured out how to flush this properly, but it's not easy to do, and it's just something you shouldn't need to do on a car that starts at $47,000. We use natural air fresheners, and they can help, but the root problem is something I haven't tried to fix yet, and it still pops up typically when the car has been sitting out in the sun. As far as maintenance and issues with the Model 3, there hasn't been much. Initially, there were some things I noted on the car at delivery, and had fixed with a service appointment. But since then, we haven't had any problems. We also haven't paid for anything on this car aside from the window tinting, but that was our decision. There has been no maintenance, and there won't be for quite some time. I'm expecting tires eventually and to need to refill the washer fluid, but for the next couple years, there shouldn't be much of anything. That's a big improvement over the average car needing oil changes and a slew of regular maintenance that isn't necessary on a Model 3 because it doesn't have those parts. The Model 3 has changed a good deal since it launched originally, but only in very small ways. The power trunk is a great improvement, the whole car is built better, and everything feels tighter when it comes to handling. I love this car and would recommend it absolutely for anyone in the market for it. If you're a road trip warrior going to distant lands, then maybe it won't make complete sense for you, as you might have to stress about charging. However, if you're like me, road tripping a few times a year to fairly normal areas, and then charging at home the rest of the year, it's an absolute joy to own. The first year with this car has been great, and I can't wait to see what the future holds with it. I'll keep you posted. In the meantime, Time, if you want to see a breakdown of the true cost of owning this car for the past year, you can check out that video linked up here or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.